uses his drawings on a drawing pad as a visual aid when he's talking and doing his stories. He won second place three times, three different times, in a weekly stand-up comedy competi competition in two, 2019 with stories about what patience is, determining if a Facebook post was appropriate for Facebook, and playing with kids who are alone. That's a topic that we'd love to hear more about, right? Uh, he has performed on Shark Attack. He's uh, performed at the Last Call. He has also performed at the Funny Bones Clash of the Comics uh, in 2021, which I love. Leo, I didn't mention this before, but Leo's home state is Iowa, and I lived in Iowa for a period of time because that's where my parents were from and my mother retired there. And I actually did stand up in Iowa. So Leo and I bonded over that. He's performed on The Nice Guys. He's performed at Night for a Cause. And he has done a 10 minute op opener for Jeff Krakenberger, who's a stand up comedian. Um, in terms of his art, he has sold artwork uh, in many different places and at many different shows. He had a self-portrait accepted into the 2021 Iowa State Fair. Uh, and, oh my gosh, there's so many things here. Uh, he's had many drawings displayed at the Des Moines Public Library uh, and got into the Momentum's Art Leadership Council in May of 2022. And uh, he has had a, a drawing and story about rock climbing displayed at the Ankeny Art Center this, this young man is so accomplished. He had a drawing that showed appropriate process of how to make new friends. Doesn't this sound interesting, Stacy? And a drawing comparing an R, uh, angry RA to Introversity, Central College's church group, uh, exhibited in the 2022 Momentum ex uh, ex exhibit. And um, he is going to have a drawing in the college's cafeteria exhibited in the Heritage Gallery starting in... Uh, the other day, November 7th, and it will be there until December 30th, and he is about to have an exhibit at the Octagon Center of Arts in Ames, Iowa from May 22nd, 2023 to June 17th, 2023. So pretty impressive. Stacy says, wow, Leo, you have a long list of amazing accomplishments. You are a rock star. Absolutely. And Emmy said, that's so awesome. So do we have you now? Uh, Leo, say something and let's see if the audience can hear Hello? you. Hello? I can hear you. Can you guys hear him? I, I hope that they can hear you. Uh, do we think that they're hearing him now? Uh, we're going to continue and you guys tell us if you still can't hear him. So, all right. So, Leo, I'm told that they can hear you. Wonderful. Thank you, Maya, for saying that. Much better. Okay. So, Leo, let's start again. Welcome to Autism Live. Hi. Hi, Shannon. Uh, I... Leo, tell I, us. I, I put the help thing in it. You what? And I want. I just went to the help thing, and I want. Oh. And I. And I. Uh, oh, well, I, I got to see that now. We can see you now, and we can hear you. So tell us again. You started to tell us before, but tell us what's on the easel right now. Yeah. Well, uh, it would take too long to explain what this sort of means, but it just shows the, shows the process of how friendships would form and uh what i do is that i sort of uh point to this drawing pad with the laser pointer so like i would say in order for you to have someone to say hi to you or for someone to say hi to you you must first join an organization but need a reason why so you yes. use your drawings to help you to convey your message when you're telling your stories. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, images uh, just do different things than what words alone cannot do. I love this. I don't know if you know Dr. Temple Grandin, but she feels the same way about speaking. She loves to have a PowerPoint that she uses in the way that you're using your drawings so that she can refer to it so that it helps her to make her message clear. And she says it keeps her on track and focus. I do the same thing. I like to have a PowerPoint when I'm telling a long talk. Uh, so I love your artwork. It's absolutely beautiful. So Leo, tell us how, how old are you? And you, I already mentioned that you live in Iowa. Well, I'm 31 years old. 
And are you are you attending the college where your work is going to be displayed, or is it just a college that's going to display your work? Well, uh, actually, I don't think so, that, that that there is a what college are you? So it says what? here that you're going to have a drawing at, at, it says, My College's Cafeteria exhibited in Heritage Gallery from November 7th to, to, uh, to December 30th this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a drawing of my college's cafeteria. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I, that, I see that now. I didn't read it right. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, so... Uh, it, so you're not attending the college right now. Did you finish? Yeah, I finished college a really long time ago. Okay. What did you study in college? I, I studied actuarial science and physics. Uh, I stopped with the actuarial science because the exams became too difficult. Yeah, yeah I, I can't, like you said that and I went, oh my gosh, that's too much for me. That hurts my head even saying actuarial science. Uh, so now, uh, is your primary thing that you're doing being a speaker and being a comedian and an artist? Correct, it is. Wonderful. Well, I love some of these credits because I said to you the other day when we, uh, when we were talking back and forth with email, I, I mentioned to you that I used to do stand-up in Iowa. So when I hear that you're at the Funny Bone, I know exactly where you're performing. Uh, that's a fun, fun place, the, the Funny Bone in Des Moines. I'm sure that it's entirely different people there now than when I was there. But that's a, that's a fun place to do stand-up. Do you love that? Yeah, except uh, it's, really, I, it's really more for people who do like stand-up for a living. Uh, I just do it for a hobby. But the Clash of the Comics is a place where oh, they let open mic performers perform uh, sometimes, although you have to uh, do some networking to get into it. And I think that uh, the Funny Bone has some connection to the open mic scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you get into all of this? How did you realize, okay, I want to be a speaker and I want to use my artwork to help me while I'm speaking? How did that come about? Well, I... The, the store standard became first because uh, I think I just uh, sort of write more to support a cause and not because I am a fan of any actor. Like when I got into an argument with my parents, I'd just uh, write something up, but they didn't really, they never really liked the story. But one time, uh, when I was interviewing for an internship where all the interns had disabilities, the recruiter said I could be somebody who educates people about autism. And I thought that I could uh, do that by telling a true story using the techniques I learned in a writing short stories class where I learned how to write like J.D. Salinger, Ernest Hemingway, and F. Scott Fitzgerald. And I, that story became a lot more effective than what I was previously doing. And I spoke to a class called Students with Exceptionalities, which my career counselor directed me to, where a portion of the class was about autism, and the class really liked it. I can imagine. I, I would like it. Uh, well, this is incredible work that you're doing, Leo. Where can people go to follow you? And if they want to have somebody come and speak at their event, they would be able to connect with you. Is there, do you have a website or social media that you want them to go to to follow you? Well, uh, I, I, I am on Facebook, and I, I am on LinkedIn, and... Uh, I do have an email at leojbird at gmail.com, like the bird that flies, and, and the letter J. Love it. Uh, Stacy wants you to know, she says, wow, all of those hobbies, artist, speaker you're doing, Leo, is so encouraging. You're so brave. I can't wait to tell my daughter about you. 
Uh, absolutely. And in fact, Leo, I want to invite you. We have a new podcast here at uh, the Autism Network called Stories from the Spectrum. I don't know, Do you ha have you ever tried making a video? Um, well, I do record my performances, and I have uh, been on podcasts before. Well, I would love it if, and we'll talk more about this off air, I would love it if you would record one of your stories for us for Stories from the Spectrum. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll make that happen. Because um, I think that you have an amazing voice that more people uh, in, in fact, uh, one, a mom reached out to us and told us about you because she was at an event and said that you spoke and that it was just absolutely like Shannon, you got to have him on the show. So uh, I'm thrilled to have you here, and would love to have you tell a story for us and for the world. I also have to say, Leo, your last name is Bird, and we want to make sure because I know people have questions about this. We have we have a couple of other people that are on our show that are regulars that their last name is Bird as well, but you are no relation to Kobe Bird or Rachel Bird, is my understanding. I've never even heard of those people. Well, you need to check out Kobe Bird because he is an actor who is uh, one of the stars of the show uh, Lock and Key on Netflix. And he shares the same last name as you, and he is an actor on the autism spectrum. So people are going to be asking you, oh, are you related to Kobe? But You'll want to know who he is. He's an amazing actor. I think you guys have a lot more in common than 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 your last name. Uh, so, but Leo, what's the goal for you? What do you want to be able to do with this talent of yours for speaking and drawing pictures? Well, I, I, I mean, I've I've got this, I've got the stories that I want to tell. It's just, it's just the big the big challenge for me is that I just need to know how to put myself out there. Well, we want to help with that. We want, uh, so I'll be talking with you about how you can make a video for us and we'll put it on Stories from the Spectrum. Whatever it is, whatever story you want to tell in whatever way you want to tell it. Okay? Sound good? Uh, so one last thing, because then we have to go, we have another guest. Leo, what do you want people to know about you and what you do? Well, uh, I I think that that knowing that somebody has how autism is going to affect somebody isn't as simple as reading some article that lists all the symptoms of autism and assuming that it affects them. And uh, don't say anything like autism will make dating uh, hobbies work more difficult for you I think that's just sort of a discouraging thing to say and uh, just try, try to listen more and lecture less and don't discourage and and don't baby me and treat me like an equal uh, so important do you feel like do you feel like that message is getting out there or do you feel like people are still just Well, uh, I think that uh, I think that people who actually uh, listen to my myself speak at open mics, I think they take me seriously. But I, I actually feel like people are more likely to listen to me on stage than when I'm in a conversation. I actually feel like I know what you're saying. It's funny because when you're the person with the mic, then you get to drive the conversation. Um, but it's kind of it's kind of odd and sad that people don't just listen. It's their loss. Say that it's their loss because clearly you've got something amazing to say. I just want to say I appreciate you taking the time to be with us. I think that the mom who referred uh, you to us was right because I think that you're an amazing speaker and I look forward to talking more with you about having you featured on Stories from the Spectrum. Yeah. Let's, let's be a part of getting what you have to say out there.
Okay, deal? All right. Leo, thank you so much for joining us today, and I, uh, I can't wait to talk with you further. Uh, and again, so you're on Facebook, Leo Bird, is what your name is on Facebook? Correct. Okay. All right. Well, uh, take a look and see. Thank you so much, Leo, for being with us. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye, Leo. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.